We go way back to a time when we were young. Before our innocence was gone, we go way back. Our innocence was gone a long time ago. It's time for the Wednesday nightcap. It's time to forget about all the rubbish that's going on in our world. As I cross to the emergency, 3AW, Broncos Bunker, Darren James, good evening. 3AW Bunkers for emergencies, our football. Good evening to you, Dennis. Hello. Our football. Well, 3AW, our football. 3AW is football, I should say. Well, we've um, got an English teacher in our midst, so you've got to be very careful because bad grammar is something up with which I will not put. Um, could I ask you, Darren, I'll, I'll ask you in just a second, but first of all, Andrew McLaren, good evening to you. My innocence was lost in a motel room in Druin many years ago. Druin? Really? <laughs> Druin? It was taken from me. Really? Who took it? I'm not going to name names. I'm not one of the Kiss and Del Brigade. Wasn't during contract negotiations, was it? <laughs> well, yes. a lot of kissing is on there, but it's usually <laughs> another side. You know what I mean? Or, or oh. was this was this you trying to eke your way into the industry? No, no, it was uh, all long before all that. Anyway, hello, gentlemen. Good to see you. Well, good to talk no, to you anyway. No, but you might not think it's good to talk to me in just a minute, Andrew, oh. because I had an email about you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And thank how you did to you go and- on, sorry, uh, Dennis, how did you go on Broadway, uh, Andrew, this week? I know you're disappointed with your performance last week. <laughs> well, that's oh. what I want to talk to him about. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I absolutely aced it with the, the marvellous Diane on Monday afternoon. There were calls coming in. The love I felt coming in through those phone well, lines, it was I, incredible. I think that might be absolute crap that you're oh. talking, Andrew. Um, I've got an email from Anthony stating that Andrew thought his future last week on Nightcap was on a knife edge after his mediocre performance on a Monday on Afternoons. Now, may I state that Andrew absolutely disgraced himself two days ago when he attempted the Latvian National Anthem. Oh, Andrew yes. Andrew McLaren. Oh, yes. I, look, I have forgotten the words. Years ago, I, you know, when I... Those lovely that autumn in Vilnius. Uh, I, I, those uh, The capital... Uh, I, I mean, I had a wonderful time there. That, that, Why would you be singing the Latvian national Because anthem? we all did. We were young and in love and the cafes were open on a Friday night. We would all sing the Latvian. Were they open in Druin? No, the you, the, the, you got it wrong anyway. It's the Lithuanian <laughs> national oh. anthem. I thought no, Druin it says was the, the Latvian the... in this email. Well, he's, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. You've made a mistake, sir. Mm. Yeah, but evidently you murdered it, and we've had a lot of international interest. In fact, <laughs> the International Court in The Hague wants you to be charged with crimes against music and humanity. <laughs> the... Let's have a listen now to the... Li- no. Lithuanian. Oh, well, let's play the Latvian one. Let's, it doesn't matter. All really. right. Andrew? Oh, yes. Yes, no, no, Again, that's not create. Oh, beautiful song. Why are we doing this? Beautiful song. <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, oh. Andrew, Andrew, uh, Darren, you wanted to say something. We're getting confused here. No, I'm all, I'm all good. I was just listening to the beautiful tones of Andrew. Yes, and it's do you wonderful. folks know that it is International Wattle Day today? Ah, yes. And I feel like September. I need, I feel I'd like I need to speak to John Williamson. But firstly, let's have a listen to this. And the Kudamandra Wattle is my friend For all at once my childhood never left me Love it Cos wattle blossoms bring it back again John, you must love today, Sunday National Wattle Day G'day, how you going? <laughs> you alright? Yeah, good, thanks How I are know. you? Yeah, good I want to a wattle on wattle day Fell well, down from a tree and just stuck on the spike of the echidna. Oh, no. It was the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, and that Andrew, echidna you... later on had a kookaburra come down. Kookaburra I don't know if you've seen that. The just, old gum tree. just as the dusk of the, the gidgee and the smell of the gidgee and the sugar cane burning, and you look at that waddle on that spike of the echidna and you think, Damn, I love Australia. I was coming to see you that day, John. Well, and, what are you uh, drifting into Aussie accent? Well, because oh, I Darren? just feel like it is right. And, and the, 
I was driving the FB, you know, I had a Vegemite in my hair and a wombat right. in my lap, <laughs> and I was just, <laughs> and I was just heading towards you know, I could, you know, when I seen that waddle on that yeah. spike of that kid, I tell him I teared it up, no, no mistake. I don't well, know whether I don't know whether you've ever seen a uh, wombat back into its hole. One of the most no, amazing things you've ever seen. No, what just does, as what a does it dust like? Oh, well, yes, that big butt just moving backwards and. <laughs> Yeah, you, tear, you tear up, don't you, John? You just yeah. you know, how lucky we are down here. I just feel like we should do the whole hour and, you know, this kind of yeah. talk. It's kind of speak. Well, I'd run out of material in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be I think we seconds. have now. <laughs> <laughs> we have. nine six nine hundred six nine three, which leads me to a very important question to both of you. Mm. Darren James... Emergency Bunker Specialist, Colonel of the Emergency Bunker. In fact, our Emergency Bunker Commander. That's right. <laughs> yes. Don't worry about wine bar. This is Darren James in the Emergency Bunker with in tonight's, bunker. tonight's topic. Well, I don't know whether you saw uh, Luke Jackson, Melbourne player. Didn't have his mouth guard in and during a uh, Whoa, clash yes. lost his teeth, his Ooh. two front teeth, just bang, out they came. It's as simple as this, Andrew. How have you lost a tooth in unusual circumstances? Did anyone ever punch you, Andrew? I've been tempted. <laughs> the cue That's... form's on the left to do it, Dennis. You'd have to be, you'd be about 15 back. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I, uh, no, I, I, I luckily, I, oh, yes, I have, yes, I have. Uh, a bit of an altercation once. Uh, oh, but, what happened? Well, I didn't start it, but it was just got... Uh, some... Did, she, did she take the first punch? <laughs> oh, no, don't. No, listen. No, was please. it when you were taking photos down at Bojangles? No, I was threatened with that when I was, but no, I didn't. No, this was uh, outside a, a dance venue. <laughs> uh, some, oh, God, I was 18. 19. What, outside Stan Munro's? This is no, the show? No, no, no. It was out of, oh, damn, was it, it was in a Masonic Hall somewhere. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I Who were you with? Oh, who and why cares? were you there? Why were you there? Well, I yeah, think I was... What were you doing there? Oh, well, oh, it was a dance. I wonder why I was there. I have no idea. <laughs> you were there trying to pick up. Well, what do you go to dances for when you're 18? Oh. To dance. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what everyone... I want to go along and do the monkey and the frug. That's all oh, I wanted to do. What's the frug? <laughs> the did, you have a, did you have a special opening line or a special move that you'd uh, have a crack at? <laughs> Uh, do you come here lately? Do you come here often? <laughs> no, no, none of that. Hey, let's get to topics, boys, because we've got to move on. No, if you, I'll host the show. You just contribute something oh. valuable. Well, my, mine is how have you week. lost a tooth in unusual circumstances? That's and a very other... good question. Thank you. And I've got an update, too, just quickly on last week's topic. Uh, you may recall big old Wally, the walrus that was sinking boats because yes. he didn't have anywhere to sunbake. What, 800 uh, k's of him? 800 kilos. Well, the Irish, uh, he's, he's headed up the Irish coast. And what they've done, they've sp- put in a special floating pontoon for him. So he's got somewhere to jump up on without it, be- it being a boat and sinking it. So Wally's in good shape again with good his own you. pontoon. <laughs> Crazy, happy isn't for it? that. Uh, have you lost a tooth in unusual circumstances? That is a brilliant topic. It's 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 current, Darren, because of what happened at the football. Well, Luke Jackson, yeah, lost his front tooth, two of them, and he apologised to his mum too. Andrew, yes, he did in the car. Andrew, over to you. Yes, uh, w- worst moment travelling by plane. Mine stuck five hours on the runway at O'Hare Airport in Chicago while they looked for, while well, they tried to find. Uh, a de-icing machine that worked. And I'm, what's oh. more, I'm sitting beside, in economy, I'm sitting beside a very large lady. I'm pressed up against the wall of the plane. I had a window seat, but I'm actually <laughs> pressed up. And she's got, it's winter, of course, and she's got so much clothing on. I act, It's true, I was getting claustrophobic. Oh, as the hours and hours went by. And oh, they you made, would too, yeah. It was actually just under five hours. It was like four hours and 40 minutes. I, I thought, come on, come on. It was terrible. Let's hear some stories like that when things really go wrong when you've been travelling by plane. Were well, you travelling alone? 
No, no, Joanne was there, but we couldn't get seats together. Why have you... You're <laughs> obsessed with who I'm with at any one moment of but time. You're next, to, you're next to this lady that you needed to take a taxi and a bus ride to get on were a you, good um, side. Were uh, you ch- was, chatting up this overclad woman? No, she was a, a lovely lady, and I, if she's listening right now... Oh, uh, she would be. Yeah, she <laughs> yeah, was, she almost be. certainly Over is. in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> she... Um, or lost consonant. Yeah, she, she was very kind about it and said, oh, look, I know, and, and all that. Anyway, she we would have been to... a good pillow, though, wouldn't she? Oh, well, no, because I was sort of, no, she was pressing did me up against the your... wall. Did, oh. No, did you accidentally nod off and find yourself warming yeah. in on her shoulder of her over-clad, overclad uh, body? The day I'm able of... to go to sleep on a plane, oh, oh, it'll be a wonderful day. I've never been able to sleep once on a oh, maybe once for five minutes or something. But no. Darren, Darren, your topic, it's already going off, but Has I'm sure Andrews off? will too. Oh. And management are listening, just to check it. So what is it? Right. Have you travelled le- next to a large lady on a plane, is that it? No, worst moment's travelling by oh, air. that's right, that's right. There's oh, real stuff-ups that happen. Yeah, go on, Dennis, please. No, 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 I'll do it after the break. But Edo wants to talk about losing a tooth, Edo. Yes, indeed. I was a second-hand dealer for years in Brunswick, over 20 years, and in North Carlton. And we used to buy stuff in, in, in crates. And people would say, oh, you wouldn't want the stuff in the shed. And I said, yes, I would. Anyway, so I was in the shop one day, and I was filling out this crate. And there's a redhead matchbox there. And I pulled it out and opened it. And there was this gold tooth with a bit of wire at the side where you could hook it into your mouth and I thought, oh, that's a bit disgusting. And I threw it out. And I thought, oh, that's the end of that. And then I thought a few weeks later, I said, hang on, gold's worth money. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, well, slightly different to what so, you suggested, Darren, but still. Yes. Yeah. I, I, now, by the way, with your topic, do we... No Collingwood supporters to call in because otherwise the board will be flooded all night. With oh, missing no, teeth. I think <laughs> that is just not fair. I well, I no, it probably was I a bit much, and I probably went too far, and I apologise. Yes, you should apologise. have had an email here. Um, my sister knocked a school teammate playing hockey, knocked a school teammate on her side, knocked both teeth out, 16 years of age, cost my parents a fortune. Oh, boy. Oh. Andrew, was your dance called Keyboard and in Punt Road, South Yarra, someone has suggested? No. No, I What's can't. the frug? The food. The frug, frug was a dance in the sixties. Now this was a, it was like a converted. They'd converted a, what do you call it, Masonic hall or something. I can't remember now. Did you ever limbo rock? No, I was. I was going to enter a competition for it in on the beach at Elwood in uh, the summer of sixty two, sixty three. Mike Walsh was uh, of three X Y personality was conducting yes, he a, was. A, lump, a limbo competition, and uh, I was too far back in the queue. And uh, oh. the time was up and I missed out. They could have done a twist uh, competition on Elwood Beach. That would be interesting in the sand, wouldn't it? <laughs> you'd, you'd burrow yourself down, <laughs> yes. You'd have been good at it, the twist, though. And also the bus stop, you'd have been good at that. And the sprinkler? The sprinkler? <laughs> the sprinkler? Oh, yeah, What's the sprinkler. The sprinkler? So that's where you have one hand extended and the other one sort of like a sprinkler oh, moves go, around. Oh. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. I'll have to practice when I get yeah, home. We need to practice. Okay. Let's get down to the very important business of callers, and that is, have you lost a tooth in unusual circumstances and your worst moment travelling by plane? 96900 693 13, 13 32. My producer's yelling at me. We'll be back shortly. Hey, let's do the little... <laughs> rip me strides, uh, Jimmy! Oh, what have you done to Tom Elliott's chair you, in there, Andrew? <laughs> what did you say? Lift your strides? No, uh, rip me strides, Chubby! I said <laughs> to him. <laughs> Chubby. Is that one of the things you used to do at the dance? You'd rip your strides. To yeah, Biggie sort of McLaren... To, sort of did pays you ever to wear, advertise stuff. Or someone else's after the gig. Uh, did you ever <laughs> wear a kilt, Andy? Well, I, I wore it at that uh, particular limbo competition. There was, oh, did uh, you? Yeah. Um, Darren, what's worn under a kilt? Nothing. It's all in perfect working order. <laughs> <laughs> They've got, they got no reaction from I can't nothing. even feign a laugh. Now. I mean, I've heard it, what, 25 <laughs> times? Yeah, but it's good every time. In fact, I think it gets better. Hello, Ross. My Ross. Wednesday evening travel companions on my way home from work. Right. Uh, so I love Thank this you. hour. Good on um, you. I was flying from uh, Sydney to Kuala Lumpur because I, I'd missed a flight from Brisbane. And I got on, I was last person to check in, so I was front, middle row, uh, sorry, middle seat of five on a bulkhead. 
I've got two blokes from South Africa who have flown from Perth to Brisbane to Sydney, going to KL to go to India to fly into Jakarta because they're saving 50 bucks. Oh. And they uh, haven't had a shower for 17 hours. Oh, and oh that's good. Uh, I've got an old mate who's 65 with his wife going on his first overseas trip. He didn't want to shut up. The two oh. blokes next to me from South <laughs> Africa stunk like polecats. <laughs> and uh, old, mate's wife is, old mate's wife is having a shot at me because I kept on ordering him... him because I just wanted him to shut up so I could go to sleep. So uh, <laughs> that, that equals uh, a fat woman on a, on a Chicago. It, it does. In fact, it surpasses oh. it. That's, and how long was the flight again? Uh, my flight was 10 hours, but I'd, mm. had to, I'd uh, left, left the passport at home and I had to race back and miss my flight to my original flight to KL. So, oh. yeah, so, you, so you're, not even, on, you're not even on the plane you wanted to be on. Yeah. No, that's right. And then got stuck with old uh, old mate, oh, five year old Skip, and he was, you know, you're talking John Williams before, and yeah. he was, hey, you go, mate. Oh, <laughs> I'm, to, I'm going over to Asia. Where do you reckon I should go? Asia. Yeah, Asia. so I, I had a guy Asia, sitting next. Mate. Asia. I, yeah, I on another Asia. flight, I had a guy telling me. Uh, we've just been overseas for the first time, and he just wanted to explain to me, and we saw the Palace of Versailles. Look, everyone who's been to Paris has seen the Palace of Versailles. I have seen it. Everyone's seen it. And he started to go through in detail with me. <laughs> I mean, this lasted... I, I tried to pretend I was asleep. I tried to change the topic. Now we go back to it. And I thought, oh, my... Come. Sometimes it would be an anti-bore law on planes. You know, you, yes. you pay extra not to sit next to a bore. Yeah, and I think there should be a... he must have listened to your show in, in, in advance because he knows you don't sleep on planes. Yeah, that's probably so. so. Uh, yes. <laughs> no. Thank you for your story, Ross. Outstanding there a, story. There should be a code when you get on a plane of sort of a, you clap your hands or something, which means I don't want to talk. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. There should be something, or you sit in rows where silence is required for the whole flight, or virtually the whole flight. Or and, and a you, good, yeah. good tip is putting those eye masks on, you know, that to make you sleep. Yeah, that's the point. And yeah. also, once upon a time, they don't do it now for security reasons. But pilots, if you are any kind of celebrity, you're always being asked to go up front and see the pilot. The pilot wanted to do a bit of groupiedom, and it always. <laughs> and I used to feel sorry for the celebrity. You know, there's some guy on host a TV show in Sydney, he'd be always having to go up the front of the plane every time he flew to Melbourne. For taping. That's right. That is spot on. Nine six nine hundred six nine three. Sue, hello. Hi everyone. How are you going? Good, Sue. Um, I went to a local cafe here where I live, and I'm sitting there with some friends, and I decided to order a popcorn muffin, and I've never had one before, and I'm sitting there with a nice cup of tea and everything, and the next minute I'm munching away, and then I thought, oh. I'm missing a tooth. The, the tooth went down. It's gone right down into through my throat and through into my body. Well, I was devastated. And then the next few days, I'm at home. Every time I went to the toilet, I'd be <laughs> looking in there to see. <laughs> oh. Oh. Are you okay, You're Andrew? Andrew? With all this, how, how closely, Sue, did you look? <laughs> oh, there's so much I could say. <laughs> Sue, did you find it? No. <laughs> Probably That's a good a, thing, really. There's a whole new topic for us. <laughs> oh, boy. So, no, like I feel sorry for you. Sue, I think Andrew's got a valid point. I mean, how mm. carefully did you did you search for this? Mm. Oh, well, I had to dissect, yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm f- I've got a feeling a sieve is in action here, but that's just a oh. thought. Nice, Sue. <laughs> Are you all right, uh, Andrew? Are you there? I'm just fine. I'm waiting for the next call. It's, it keeps keep the program <laughs> punching. Punch along, boys. Um, You're just reveling forget, now in the in the, the smut. <laughs> don't forget. No, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of things. Oh, um, now we're going to do the w- really bad puns. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst moment you've had by, when you travelled by plane and have you lost a tooth in unusual circumstances? And have you found it again? Sue, hello. That was Sue. Oh, Sue. Andy. Good evening, gentlemen. <clears throat> Mum used to do a Sunday roast all the time, usually a leg of lamb, and I'd be the one that gets a little, um, little um, bit on the Thank- end of it, the little shank. 
Oh, yes. And um, I'd eat the meat about it, and then it had a little curved bit on it that sometimes it was cooked long and it'd be nice and crunchy. And I tried to, to try and get to the knuckle of the shank. I put it in my mouth to break the piece off, and the tooth went north, and the shank went south, mate. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, and I've got another one for you. It's a mate of mine. <laughs> we were on the Sitmar back in 1984, oh. and um, he was trying to impress um, one of the waitresses on there. But unfortunately, then halfway into the cruise, he got got crook as a dog and heaved up his two front false teeth, mate. Oh. <laughs> once, they oh. in, once, once they get into the toilet on the sit, mate, that's the last thing you don't go looking for. <laughs> no, yes. no, not at all. Well, <laughs> Romance would have died right then and there, eh, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. 96900 693 131332. Have you lost a tooth in unusual circumstances? And the worst moment you've had travelling by plane? I still haven't shared mine yet. I might leave it until the end. 96900 693 or 131332. 26 to 10, 3RW's Wednesday nightcap. Darren James and Andrew McLaren are with me, and we're having a few laughs, which is great. Jonathan. When I was young, I listened to the radio, waiting for my favorite song. Uh, when it played, I'd sing along. It made me smile. <laughs> oh, sugar. Well, that's <laughs> not bad. That was very good, good indeed, wasn't it, Andrew? Go Did ahead, you like that? Jonathan. Wonderful. Jonathan, he's gone. Oh, uh-huh. okay. <laughs> what is going on here, Jeff? Hello. Andy, Pandy, sugar and candy. How are you, old son? <laughs> I think I'm okay. <laughs> I, I, yes, old Andy, Pandy. It's a really rough, yeah. macho sort of uh, handle to wear, but uh, I think I wear it well. I think you, oh, you, you wear it perfectly, Andrew. I've got a joke for you, but it needs some participation on your behalf. Well, yeah, let's take it let's, away, Andrew. Over to you. Take over. Let's see. I'm always a bit worried about jokes on radio. Yes, yes. I would be too. That's why I'm no, just no, I need you to say to me, what rhymes with orange? What rhymes with orange, Jeff? No, it doesn't. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> me, just... But there is nothing that rhymes with orange. In fact, uh, Bruce Mansfield, who I used to work with, Bruce. his brother, this is a true story, Stan, his nickname was Borange because when they were kids, Stan said to Bruce... Uh, what rhymes with orange? There's not a word. And he said, yes, it is. And he said, what is it? He said, it's Borange. That's your name. He said, my name's not Borange. He said, well, it is now. And for the rest of his life, <laughs> really? Stan was known to Bruce as Borange. Oh, for heaven's sake. It's a true story. <laughs> what a ripper. Jeff, yeah. thank you for your call. If anyone else has an a, a interactive joke that you would like to share and have Andrew as the talent, please give us a call. Sarah, hello. Well, hello, guys. Yes, I love your show. Um, I was a um, I was on a plane and I um, I'd been travelling back from Canberra. I had to go up there. I was working in government and I had to go up to my director. And I didn't realise the flight was so quick, you know. And they made you sort of like stay in your seatbelt. And um, I had a glass of wine with one of my colleagues before I sort of hopped on the plane. And then to my dismay, I found that I was sitting near one of the big executive directors and I'm thinking, oh, my God, I don't want to be near this person. (laughs) And I was just busting to go to the loo because I'd had this glass of wine and I was hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. And he was asking me if I wanted a drink and wanting to talk to me. And I must have had these, you know, sort of like weird contortions on my face. And and I should have just sort of said to the, the... you know, the hostess says, oh, look, look, I really need to go. You have to just let me get up. You know, don't make me stay locked in this in this seatbelt. Uh, <laughs> what happened? Really sort of like shocking sort of thing. I did not, I, I was fine. I hung on, I hung on. It was a miracle, but I hung on. Oh, dear. You've oh, been caught no. like, how short, just quick, quickly, Sarah, how short was the flight? Well, it was really, it was, it was less than an hour. It was shocking. Nothing. Fifty, about probably like, 50, 45, 50. They should have oh, let you yeah. go to the lab, shouldn't they? I don't it's, know. What's the, no, what's the, the lab. Really yeah. and it was terrible, and it was just, oh, my God. And I'm sure that executive director thought I was a real prude because he was offering me drinks, and I was saying, no, no, I don't want any drinks. No, please don't give me any drinks. <laughs> 
that's one of the worst feelings when you oh. do need to go. Andrew, Andrew, do you go to the lab a lot? <laughs> Almost <laughs> constantly. I can't wait for the next ad break. And but in the meantime, you... <laughs> we're talking to Sliv. Well, no, what Sliv, about... what's your name here? <laughs> Siv. 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 What about the five and a half hours on the tarmac at O'Hare? You wouldn't have been able, been able to hang on for that time, would you? Uh, well, I, I did, yes, I must That's have. That's why the woman had so much clothing on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to absorb all my... What was her name? Moisture. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. She was Peggy Sue. I don't know. <laughs> was it Peggy Sue? Well, hey, did you news Peggy Sue, did you? <laughs> I, I don't know if you knew Peggy Sue. Now, come on, let's move on with the boys. We've got a whole program to get stop through. stop moving on? It's just a Wednesday night. It's a, it's bit a of relaxed, relaxed Wednesday, night. Andrew. We're having a bit of fun. Yeah, exactly. Sue. Of course we are. Hello, boys. Yeah, I love this program. I mean, one minute you could be discussing on a you could you be discussing a plane trip where the guy in row thirty eight he smells like the local treat, sewage treatment works, and then the next minute you're discussing the chicken dance. It's a brilliant program. I mean, Thank you. We, we, like it's very mid- highly produced. No, yeah, oh, of course it is. I, look, I think it should be the brand new midday show. Carry on, can eat your heart out. All you oh, need is an okay. it's conducted by someone. I mean, I think it should be a brand new midday show. Channel Nine, owner of this network, we love Channel Nine. Uh, they should, uh, they should, they should uh, put something together like this. It'd be brilliant. We'd all watch. Um, I have okay. to say, I, I have to say that, well, particularly with Andrew's reaction to jokes, that is probably heard for the forty thousandth time. I, I'm with you there. Uh, Mr. McLaren. Thank you. Uh, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. Now, uh, uh, Mr. James, I have to tell you, I enjoyed your impersonation of John Williamson. It's That's very, very close. He it's not an impersonation. It's, the, it's actually no. John. John? Oh, it's actually, he's actually John. G'day, John. Great to have you with us with your guitar. Uh, is it golden? Is the, uh, is the guitar golden? Yeah, g'day. Or is yeah, it made out of pine? Oh, look, I, I'm just on top of the world. Nah, I'm just on top of the world. I, I, the view's great up here. That's uh, made out of a uh, <laughs> eucalyptus what from is, the Dane tree. What, what oh, right. oh, the environmentalists would love you for that. Are you listening, Sarah Hansen Young? <laughs> He's and cutting the, uh, down the Dane tree for his guitars. The, the fret, just the uh, fret area. Yeah. He's got the uh, skin of a uh, unfortunate <laughs> incident of a goanna that was hit by a road train just outside. <laughs> Peter Mundra. Oh, well, wonderful. You know, Gorgeous. Right. Siv, thank you for your call. Hello, Jezza. Keep my plate in a kangaroo yeah. scrotum, too. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Jezza, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, I was on a flight to um, Bangkok with my friend, Thai Airlines, and uh, he's got up, grabbed his cigarettes, gone to the uh, toilet to have a smoke. <laughs> He's come back, and the flight attendant, who looked like he could kick the uh, the Scheisenhausen out here, is following. <laughs> and my mate points to me as if I was the perpetrator. Oh. oh. <laughs> Did he get away with that? <laughs> uh, the attendant, uh, big boy, he goes, uh, giving him, like, the handcuff thing and... Um, Telling him, mate, uh, you're in big trouble. Oh, gee. And my oh, mate gee. keeps keeps pointing to me. Oh, that's... And I don't smoke, you know. And <laughs> what a rat fink! Oh, yeah, that's yes. What a what? Rat fink. Rat fink. <laughs> I've heard that since I was a kid. No, I know. I bring him back, don't I? And that's you bring wonderful. Bring him back, all right. And we'll no, bring you back more. Left them behind. We'll bring back more right after <laughs> the next ad break. No, but the thing is this, boys. I no, have a text not. from a friend, a Channel 9 friend. Is it, uh, is it Stick Man? I can't say that, but could oh, be. it's Sticky. How is yes, Sticky? Yes, it is. It is Stick Man. Uh, yep. A former GTV employee named Rowan, I won't give his surname, a uh, fantastic uh, person on lighting, um, threw his false teeth up in an aeroplane loo. He was, a, he was away for a month and couldn't go without teeth, so he had them retrieved by the airline in London, boiled them in water for 24 hours, and then, yes, he did. <laughs> Hang on a minute. How did he? F- how did they come out of his mouth? Uh, he was throwing up in the toilet on the plane. Oh, he was having a Halley's Comet, a, a yes. Northcote and Q. He was yes. crying Ruth Andrew. Yes, yes, laughing at the lab and all that stuff, yeah. It is he 18... was driving the porcelain bus, Andy. Shut yeah, up. It is 18 to 10. Back shortly. <laughs> 
plenty of time for your calls. Uh, back to them shortly. Email from Mick. I took a flight from Hell in 2004 from Perth to Sydney. When we got near Sydney, it was stormy. The pilot had to circle the airport, which went on and on. People were throwing up every so often from the turbulence. The pilot came on and said, we cannot land, so we're diverting to Canberra. Uh, he also added, we should have enough fuel. What? We made it to Canberra, and I thought, you can keep my luggage, I'll catch the bus. I want to live, damn it. It's time with you, Mick. We should have enough fuel. That is not a good message, is it? It's no. A little. Uh, it, they would have had heaps. I, I believe it would have been safe. Yes, you Thank would hope. You. Um, Paul, hello. Have you got something for Andrew? Uh, yes, I do. Look, um, I'm a school teacher, and um, I, I like to start um, every day with um, a dad joke an awful dad joke that gets my kids um, either cringeworthy or um, they log out very quickly. But um, I told them a story. I had a, a friend um, that I, uh, I've known for many years. His name's Harley. And I texted him the other day and I said, I wish your dad's name was David. And I didn't get any response. Um, and eventually, <laughs> a few hours later, it was just a eh? WTF. And I, I said, because then I could introduce you as, this is Harley. David's son. Oh. Ah, yes. See, Andrew, that's the kind of that, work we love. Did you use that kind of material when you were teaching, Andrew? No, I just used to use a couple of songs from my cabaret act to, uh, to warm the uh, class up. Oh, like which ones? Oh, I'd have, from this moment on, you and me, baby. You know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. How did that go down? <laughs> At Coburg Tech in 1972, not all that well. <laughs> Did you have sort of stories? Would you tell them about your nights at, at no, Stan Munro's and this is the show? He would have been, he he been and... the most boring teacher on earth. Hey, no. Straight, no, you would have been straight down the line. Would have been sit down and shut up and listen oh, to me. Oh, were you strict, were you, Andy? Oh, no, not at all. That was a big problem. Anyway, let's get back to calls because we've got a so lot there, would gentlemen. You stop trying to take over the hosting of the program. <laughs> you can do that in a few weeks. Pacing, pacing, Dennis, pacing, oh, pacing, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah Eric, I like hello. that click of the fingers. That's very oh, groovy, man. Oh, he's, he thinks he's t- Tony Bennett in cabaret. <laughs> hello, Eric. Okay. Yeah, get out, guys. Funny night. Um, yeah, my, I fell victim to a call mint on the two. Oh no! Yeah. Could you stop you know, at one? Say, you can't. It can't stop at one. I've got the first one. Yeah. And it came out because oh, of the cool mint. Yeah, yeah. Eric, yeah. I yeah. share yeah. that with oh, you. Darling. Eric, I, 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 my first loss of tooth was with the cool mint, and I, I was in the lounge room of the house. Of, yeah, and I can. Oh was man, the, out was, of came. Hang on, hang was on. It was Sydney it the same, Nolan's house? No. Hang on. Was it the same cool mint with Eric? No, we weren't sharing cool mints, no. Cool mints, Johnny Young used to do those ads. You worked with John for a while there, Andrew. Did yeah, he do t- cool mint ads, did he? Did okay. he? He used to have at the turntable going and he'd look at the camera and then go, can you stop at one? Oh, I don't ah. remember that. No. Don't you remember that? Yeah. No. I knew a bloke who lost his tooth with cool mints. His wife threw the can at him. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, thank you for your memories. William, hello. What happened with me, I used to play tennis. The guy I used to play against, he lost four teeth. Four Why? Teeth. Oh, how? Apparently, apparently what happened, I went to hit the tennis ball, the racket snapped and it flew and got him. And he lost four teeth. Four oh, teeth. gee. But the only thing was, he kept on playing. He hit the tennis ball, got me in the nose. But, okay, ended up with a spectre bus, broke a nose. So oh. he's lost four teeth, you've broken your nose, and they yeah, say and tennis is a non-contact a great sport. Day. Yeah. I end up with a spec that broke a nose through it, but yeah. I couldn't do nothing about it. <laughs> Thank goodness you didn't play golf together. Yeah. But the, the, the record <laughs> snapped in half to make it worse. Yeah. Yes. I don't know well, it happens. I, I've been Andrew? Dying now. I don't play no more every time. Andrew? Why do I have to comment on each and every caller? <laughs> We're trying to get you involved in I the program. <laughs> it's time to move should... to. Thank you, William, <laughs> so much, Denise. <laughs> Let's have your story. I believe you've got a tooth story. <laughs> pays, pays, pays. <laughs> Denise, good evening. Uh, Denise. Oh, Donnie, you well? be do. You frightened She's let her. you down, Andrew. You frightened oh. Denise off. <laughs> I might have too. Soapy, tell us your story. Oh, Soapy. How are you? Same. It was great to, great to hear a little bit of uh, Ernie Evans before. That's Chubby Checker, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, we interviewed him on radio, uh, John Blackman and I, when we did uh, breakfast on uh, AK. Oh, really? All right. Yeah. He, he makes some pretty life, wild though. claims. I've, I've seen a couple of Chubby Checker interviews. He sort of, I, I invented dancing and I invented rock and roll and I was bigger than Elvis. Oh, yeah. And he is uh, certainly not lacking in confidence. Now, I was going to tell you a tooth story. Um, when I was about 16, uh, Dad took me to the Seventh-day Adventist to check out the Edward East. And uh, he says, we've got to take three tooth out, teeth out. And I, he said, he brushes his teeth all the time. He said, no, if we don't take them out now, his mouth's going to explode and he's not going to have a good set of teeth. He'd pro- probably end up looking like Chad Morgan. And uh, anyway, as it turned out, uh, he was right. Oh. oh. So out they and- came. And out they came, and the teeth grew perfectly. Oh, yeah, I suppose that does happen, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is Chad, uh, Dennis, you'd know, uh, sorry, sorry, but is Chad Morgan still with us, Dennis? I don't know, but I watched him at um, somewhere like, uh, somewhere around Cootamundra at a country music festival, West Wyalong it was, not near Cootamundra, um, at a country music festival, and I stood there with my mouth open watching him. It was just fascinating. I, I tell alive. you, he still lays still him. Alive. He still, he still he lays him in the through. aisles. I've seen him work a couple of times. His yeah. audience reaction is fantastic, Dennis, isn't it? What about those teeth? I know, the, I know the teeth. Yeah. Remember, he does all that stuff. Yeah, yeah that's the, right. The Sheik yeah. of Scrubby Creek. That's yeah. him. Soapy, thank you for your memories there. We'll take a break. More of your calls after the Wednesday night cap. Darren James, Andrew McLaren. Hello, Brian. Hey, Dennis, how are you, mate? Yeah, good. Go ahead. Yeah, a bit of an old one. That's uh, supposed to be true. A few guys out fishing and uh, throwing a few lines in. Had a big night the night before, and one of them decided that he felt a bit crook and uh, over the side. Anyway, he's come up and uh, not very happy. He's let go his false teeth, lost them in the in the bay. So yeah. they fished for a bit longer, and one of the blokes has pulled his false teeth out and said to the other guy, hey, a bit of a nudge, watch this. So he throws his line in and waits a couple of minutes. Pulls it up and he goes, Jeez, have a look at this. <laughs> the bloke looks around, he goes, God, you've got me too. <laughs> so he grabs them, puts them in his mouth, and he goes, They're not mine, and threw them back overboard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, the bro. topic sort of changed around from uh, losing your teeth to where you've had a vom, isn't it, Andrew? It has <laughs> become that, but you know, this is we just go with the flow, don't we, Darren? Well, well, if you if you're so, driving the if you're driving the porcelain bus, you've got to go with the flow there. <laughs> Brian, thank you for your call. Hello, Denise. Hi, Dennis and Andrew. Um, about Darren? teeth. Mm. <coughs> I've got. <coughs> excuse me, I've got the crack. I've got um, most of my teeth, <laughs> but I recently went to a dentist who first did a crown, then a uh, root canal. And then by the time he got to that, he said, I won't attempt it to pull it out <clears throat> because he just didn't want to do it. So he sent me to a specialist who was fairly young and um, he claimed to be a surgeon, a doctor and a dentist. Oh. And I'm telling you, he was most unprofessional. That's not and, good. Um, hmm? That's not good. Not good at all. What was the outcome, Denise? Oh, well, it's not too bad now, but it took about four weeks to heal. I've never had... Oh, boy. Actually, the only time I had teeth out was when I had my wisdom teeth out, and um, this was the first tooth that came out, and well, I wasn't I hope... very happy about it. I no. don't blame you, and uh, that makes people nervous of going to the dentist. Has uh, Uki of... still, still got all of hers, Andrew? Yes, she has. I wish I could say the same. Oh, uh, where, did, a... where did yours end up? Oh, I don't know. A... <laughs> I've kept them. I'm <laughs> leaving them to my daughter, so she's uh, got just a, memories just, of me. <laughs> just a quick, quick call, boys. Just hang on. Anthony, good evening. What's happening? Oh, yes, good evening. Uh, I've just had a, a... A group of 25 people where I'm living. Yep. And they caused a, a riot. Wh- uh, which suburb, Anthony? In Melbourne, CBD. In the CBD, okay. That's correct. Uh, I'm on the, on the highest level and they're up on the, another highest level. Uh, police are everywhere uh, trying to arrest them. Some are running away. Which street, which street Anthony? Uh, next to 
Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, another street. That's all. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, some little Lonsdale Street. Anthony, mm, hang on okay. there. Please have a, a, a chat to my uh, producer, Marnie. Darren, we only have 15 seconds. Do you have something to leave us with? Change, Andrew, is inevitable, mm. except when using a railway station vending machine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well said. Thank you, boys. Thank you, Darren James. Thank you, Andrew. 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 Andrew.